So pastor, don't nobody who didn't accept Christ, including millions of Muslims and children whose parents taught them to be Muslim, so all of them in a burning hell. I didn't tell, I didn't say that. What's really sad is you're part of the problem. I reviewed a video where R.A. Vernon made a statement that is something that should never come out of a pastor's mouth. Now, the overwhelming majority of people in the comments understood and was in agreement that what he said was blasphemous. It was wrong. Uh, it fit the definition, the criteria that Paul lays out in Galatians, that a person that would say such a thing is to be a curse. He literally states that he doesn't know any other way but Jesus. But there, in other words, he gives an opening that there might be another way. Whether he believes it's another way, I think he does believe it's another way because he gives an example. That's not the problem. The problem is the people who did not quite get it, who were in the comment section, who wanted to defend this person. So before we play some more of this clip, let's go and prove the point and then show who the bigger problem is. Look at these comments. This is the comments from the, from the video, and I'm starting from the bottom. Uh, these are folks that say you're taking what he's what he's saying literally out of context. Well, my question is, what is the context? Uh, here's one who says. Must be a slow day for you, Corey. I am not an RA apologist, but it sounds like he was saying this in jest or even being sarcastic. So to suggest this person is accursed uh, because of a poor choice of particular figures of speech seems like a bridge too far. Uh, this person, come on, bro, you're grasping your straw. Stop being petty and focus on sharing Jesus. I have something to say about that. Uh, taking, his, th taking his comments out of context, calling me Mr. Perfect. Uh, which, by the way, what is the context? He was talking about Samson, and then he jumps into this point. Uh, the issue isn't what his overall point was, is that what he stated. We'll come back to that in just a second, though. He says, uh, you be stretching these videos. He was saying he did not know if there was another way. He only knows Jesus. Lady, you're missing the point. This is the problem. Some of you people are the bigger problem. Some of you people are worse than him. Uh, I'm no Ari Vernon fan, but this is a nothing burger. Okay, uh, you are so wrong on this. Not familiar with this preacher, but the initial point he was making was there's no other way to heaven. He didn't say there's no other way to heaven. He says he only knows one way for himself or he'll know the way for himself. Uh, continuing, sir. Who is your pastor and what church do you attend? You spend all your time being critical of other preachers. First of all, I don't spend my time being critical of other preachers. The other channel, the smaller channel, was literally created because people would offer and send videos. What about this? Was this correct? Is this not correct? And some things are just out there and wild and ridiculous. Some things are, uh, that's not quite it. What do we do? And so what we do is we take what they say and compare it with the scriptures. The problem is people like this person hadn't been to the main channel where there's 1,100 plus videos where there's just teaching. Never mind the Bible studies, because I'm pretty sure these folks have never even known that we had a Bible study, which tells us something that YouTube doesn't even think enough of you to recommend Bible teaching. And so all you're going to get is what you think is something that is salacious or what have you. But you don't even believe so. You don't even look for teaching things. You don't look for that because if you did, YouTube and their algorithm would recognize that's what you're looking for. But going back to the list, let's continue some more of these comments. So I want to I want to make the point off of this. And we're going to see that all of these people that think he's being sarcastic or I'm going too far with this. We're going to show you how we know he's absolutely incorrect. Ah, I think you're making something out of nothing on this one. Here's another one. Uh, Corey, he said that, my God, he wasn't being literal. That's why he quoted the scriptures. Uh, I swear, all you do is sit, sit in the seat of judgment, drawing in YouTube checks. Do you preach anywhere? Well, first of all, lady, you're sitting here judging, and you seem to keep coming back and watching this. So I guess it's fulfilling an appetite. We'll get more to that in a second, though. Why don't you help those you focus on him, not Jesus? Not really sure what he's saying. We all know what he meant. You are reaching. So I'll leave it at that. But you go back to the video on the other channel. You see too many people, too many for my taste, for my comfort, that are giving this man a pass. So what are we going to do? Let's go back and look at it. Let's. This is how we know for a fact he wasn't just speaking out of turn, used poor choice of words. He said out of his mouth that he said this, started saying this, this little story, this analogy, five years ago, and he's been doing, he's been repeating this. Here's all I can teach you. Best analogy I know, I gave it to you five years ago. Don't think I'm repeating myself. A lot of new people watching, I gotta repeat myself. I went to Ashland for like six, seven years, got my master's degree and my doctor degree. And so now, that's him saying that he's been saying the same thing for five years and repeating it. So this isn't a one-off. 
he's been saying this story. And as a preacher in his mind, it doesn't stick out the wait a second. Maybe I shouldn't say this this way. So what does he say that is so harmful? And I, so I know how to get there. Pastor, how do you get to Ashland? You, from here, you take 77, and then you get on 271. 271 going to turn into 71. Now, it's only one sign to say Ashland. I recommend you don't miss it. Or you're going to be in Columbus. Praise God. Amen. Now, there might be another way to Ashland. But I don't know about it. The only way I can show you is the way I know. There might be another way to heaven. But I don't know about it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said there might be another way to heaven. Wrong, false, sit down. You're disqualified for making that statement. You ought to never get up and speak. If that's what you're going to say, you ought to never get up and speak. There might be another way to heaven. No, there is no other way to heaven. What are we preaching for? Why are we preaching Christ if there's another way? If there's another way, shouldn't you investigate and find out and make sure of all the roads that would lead to Jesus? And I'm using that phrase that all roads lead to heaven. Shouldn't you find out if there's another way, an easier way, a better way, a way that doesn't require much as much persecution or a way that allows for more freedom? He said there might be another way. I don't know. There might be another way. But the only way I know, well, you're not making it. You're not being conclusive. You're not being definitive, which is what the pastor is supposed to do. There is only one way. And yeah, he did go back and quote the passage. But quoting the passage, uh, the passage in John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Well, finish reading it. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes to the Father but through me. There could not be any other way. Jesus foreclosed that. Why do you allow for another option? And then he reads the passage and then immediately departs from the passage. So, Pastor, don't nobody who didn't accept Christ, including millions of Muslims and children whose parents taught them to be Muslims, so all of them in a burning hell. Huh? I didn't tell I didn't say that. So that's what he said. All of those people whose children's, I mean, who, whose parents who were in a Muslim nation, their parents taught them nothing but uh, Islam. Are they in a burning hell? I didn't say that. Again, you folks saying that I'm taking his words out of context, that, that that's not what he meant. He was being sarcastic. He just told you. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. I didn't say they're going to hell. There's a scripture. I'm going to get in trouble. I don't care. I've been doing this a long time. And I'm right. And if you don't agree with me, you have a right to be wrong. Praise God. And so he's saying, if you don't agree with me, you have a right to be wrong. Well, he's wrong. And he's going to use a passage out of order, out of context, to try to make his point that people who don't know Christ can still go to heaven. God, amen. Amen. Uh, Pastor, so only people who accepted Christ, all the millions and millions and millions and millions of Muslims whose fathers taught them about no Jesus, what's happening? There's a scripture I want you to take with you. To now, again, he's making the point. He's digging a, a, a bigger hole, a deeper hole. All those millions and millions and millions of millions of people that never heard of this. And so what does he do? He wants to appeal to scripture. He, he literally wants to appeal to the scripture to say that there could possibly be some people who have never millions and millions, as he said, who've never heard of Christ who will still go to heaven. You know not of. What's happening? There's a scripture I want you to take with you the rest of your life. Jesus said, I have sheep you know not of. Now any scholar watching me in the world, you cannot exegete that passage. Don't no scholar know what it means. Don't no New Testament theologue know what that means because I don't. Jesus. So this is his arrogance, his foolishness, his stupidity. He says, no one can exegete that text because I don't know what it means. Well, it's an easy text to exegete. Jesus is speaking about who his sheep are. He's speaking to Jews in John chapter 10. He gets to John uh, 10 verse 16, and he tells them that there are other sheep of another fold uh, that uh, will come and they will join him. By the way, by the way, whoever this other sheep are, which we know to be the Gentiles, whoever these other sheep are, they still have to come through him. So when he makes a statement that these millions and millions and millions and millions and millions, and millions of other people, I have sheep who you know not of, they still have to come through Jesus. So his lack of, of, of intelligence, biblical intelligence, his um, poor exegesis, his desire to be all inclusive shows the fraud that he is. And the problem is people aren't seeing this. You mean to tell me you believe in the Bible, you follow Christ, uh, you've got the Holy Spirit in you, and you can't pick up on this on this clear, 
level of blasphemy. He's giving you examples of what he's saying. Jesus said, I have sheep you know not of. God gave me this this morning in the sprinter. They was driving me, I promise you. And the Lord gave me this driving. I said, I'm a Now, he says the Lord gave him this to say also. So he's giving another example. He's speaking about the Muslims. He's using this text, John 10. Uh, he said he's been using this for five years over and over again. So he's clearly doubling down and tripling down on this belief that people who have never heard the name of Christ can still come to heaven. Ladies and gentlemen, that is heresy. As a matter of fact, as Galatians puts it, he says that you are preaching another gospel. And that person, if it's Paul or an angel, whoever it is, Paul says that person is a curse. I didn't use a um, use that word to condemn this man because of his poor choice of words. He intentionally chose those words. And it wasn't my words. These are Paul's words. But I'm going to say this in the middle of my supposed to be Samson sermon. If I say, come out to the ranch, I'm having a get together, but it's black tie. I need everybody. If you don't have on black tie, you're not getting in. Black tie, black tie affair. If you don't come the way I told you to come, you cannot get in. So everybody has on black tie, but then my cousin come. My cousin come to the side door. Bruh, I ain't had no black tie, but I'm hungry. And I let him in. Pastor, the instruction said black tie. How you gonna let him in? Hit five people say, because it's my house. Go ahead, y'all just. If it's my house, no matter what I told you, I can let anybody in that I don't, you don't know who gonna be in heaven. Just make sure you go. So again, more of him doubling down. It's clear what he's saying. So God has told us that we have to come through Jesus, but he can also let some other folks in who don't have to come through Jesus. That is not what the Bible says. And what he's preaching is without a question. The Bible tells us in Acts 4.12, it says, there is no salvation under anyone else. There is no other name under heaven whereby which that is given whereby which men can be saved. There is no other way. And so he says the Lord gave him this. One, that makes you a liar because you're lying on God. You're, you're telling God gave you this that goes against his scriptures. You are a liar. You are a false prophet. You are a biblical moron. You are a mark against the pulpit. And people who want to follow him, let's put R.A. Vernon to the side. And let's just hope that maybe he just doesn't get, let's just hope he doesn't get it. Let's just hope he's just confused. But what about you people who are going out of your way to defend this man? What about you who think that, oh, Corey, it, it, it's okay. He, did, he didn't really mean that. What he was saying was this. What about all these people here who have nothing but, I want to keep defending. He was clearly being sarcastic. You're reaching, bro. He said Christ's the only way. It's not like he actually told of another way. He literally is telling of another way. He's telling us there are people who don't know the Lord um, and God will let them in because he's God. I told y'all this way. And yet it wasn't technically true when I said there's only one way. There's another way. All you have to do is be a Muslim or be in some other country. You can also get in. That is not what the scriptures say. And so he is to be a curse, not my words, but the Lord's word. And so if you disagree with that, fine. You put yourself in the same category as he is. As a matter of fact, you put yourself in the great fallen way. We'll look at that in a second. But do you know who else says the exact same thing that R.A. Vernon is saying? Because every religion is a way to arrive at God. Sort of a comparison, an example would be they're sort of like different languages in order to arrive at God. Ma Dio è Dio per tutti. But God is, is God for all. So now the person that you heard was translating previously what the Pope said, and then he says God is God for all. Well, that's the same, that's the same car that you're in. You're thinking that, yeah, there is another way. Other people can come. How do you think this starts off? How do you think people believe that all roads lead to heaven? How do you think that people can actually believe that you don't have to be a Christian, just be the best Muslim, the best Buddhist, the best Hindu, the best uh, whatever, you name it, the best voodoo doctor, the best whatever. And as long as you're faithful to that, you'll get to heaven. How, where do you think that comes from? That comes from a teaching to say that you don't have to come through Christ. So when Jesus makes a statement, when, when they say it in Acts, when Paul makes a statement, you're telling me that they weren't correct, that they didn't think that there was somebody somewhere in Bangladesh or someplace who hadn't heard the gospel, but they still get to make it in. Well, then again, why would we send the gospel out to these people? The problem isn't them. The problem isn't so much Ari Vernon because he can't feed what he's shoveling unless there's someone there to eat. He can't offer, he can't sell these things unless there's someone there to buy. And the best we have, we've got people out there who call themselves believers, name the name of Christ, 
and will buy anything that someone who they like says. They don't, it doesn't matter. The scriptures aren't the most important thing. Uh, their feelings, their thought, how they think about things, that's what's most important. And those people make you wonder, could you possibly be saved? Now, it's possible. It's possible that you could be saved and stupid. You can be saved and stupid. Tweet that. You can be saved and stupid. That's the best thing. And I mean the best thing that we could possibly say. But you're sitting here saying that this person, he didn't mean it or he's being sarcastic and you want to defend that person? What's wrong with you people? This is where the Bible says what Paul says. The Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith. What does that mean? Not fall away from having faith, from believing, but from the belief. They will fall away from the tenets of the gospel. You know, like Jesus is the only way. Well, people are going to fall away from that, are going to leave, are going to depart that, that way of thinking. That's what's happening. Some of you people that call yourselves Christians, you are part of that group now, or you might be. You might be in danger. It could be that you're doing so maybe innocently, but you better be careful. You better beware. As Paul says, check and examine yourself. There is no way that the Spirit of God can lead you to believe such a thing. Maybe it's just that you're immature and you don't know. Maybe you're just trying to get, you, you want to be nice and give someone the benefit of the doubt. But what it does is it hurts someone else who thinks, well, okay, well, fine. Um, I'm worried about my brother. I want to share the gospel with him um, because he's a, he's a Muslim or he's a Hindu or what have you. But since the pastor told me who I love and I trust told me that this person who all he knows is Islam, he's going to be okay. So I'll leave that alone. And you never share the gospel because that's, that's what a thinking leads to. Again, this person is to be avoided. Obviously the Pope is, and there's other people who are the exact same way. And then maybe if you're the kind of person that you want to tell us that what he said is okay, well then guess what? Maybe you're the kind of person that also should be avoided.